Huh? She broke the femur bone. She did. Oh boy. Where's the femur bone? At your main bone. Yeah. yeah. Runs up, up and down your leg. Here, right here in the front. Said there was something in that yeah. When they operated on her, uh -huh. there was something in that bone. I don't know exactly. Throb went up there. Yeah. Oh my. How long has, has she had cancer? It's been a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. And that same bone, Tina's, is uh, deteriorating. Yeah. yeah. Did she ever have it looked at x-rayed or anything? Tina? See if it's getting worse. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Never heard it mentioned. Okay. I have a good praise for the Lord. Great. Uh, yesterday, we spent most of the day with our uh, nephew, Roger Jackson. Yeah. Who has cancer now. Right. Had a good day. Good, great. But he has to go for chemo tomorrow. Does yeah, he? For the next three days. Back for the next three days, but uh, we had a good day yesterday. Great. Good day. Just pray that we can keep him a little longer. You need those good days. Did you go see him? Yeah, we spent the afternoon down at the campground uh, all day yesterday. Oh, great. Uh, his mom, sister, and his daughter, uh, the, us four, and uh, uh, his wife's son and uh, his wife. Yeah. And it was just a great day. Oh, just got to just visit, visit. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Is there any others? I don't leave anybody out. <clears throat> or, or look at your look at your paper. Maybe you'll see somebody on yeah, here. Yeah, gives me some updates. Um, Does uh, Tilly and John have COVID? Mm -hmm. No, they had it on the ship. Where mm -hmm. they was at? Yeah. Well, Tilly and John. Yeah. Sarah's sister. They never they never got it again, did no. they? No, they was but the ship they was on did have uh, have COVID. The okay, so are I'm sure they are. Home, yeah. They're back home, aren't they, Linda? They're still going. Should be home this week. This week? How long have they been on it? Maybe 30 days. Oh, oh. Been. Oh, wow. I could have imagine vacation. 30 days yeah, on a right. ship. <laughs> Even one that treats you really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> 30 days in prison, huh? <laughs> yeah. did, did, they have, did they have to have to stay in their own room? Or? Well, I told them every time they went out to put their mask on. Then oh. she's going for two months. Oh. End of October. <laughs> neighbor that takes care of her dog? Uh, one came to her house, her friend, and has been staying with Ruby. Okay. <laughs> she goes to two months, a friend from Canada is going to come and stay in her house. Who is? A oh. friend she has in Canada. Uh-huh. Yeah. She could have come stay in her house so she could go on a cruise. For two All months. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well. Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, Linda, do you know anything about uh, um, Teresa's friend, Mary, uh, Marianne Supplanda. Wow. Oh. She's been on here forever. Yeah, she's on hospice now. Oh, she's yeah. on hospice. But that's been a long time since she's been on hospice. hospice. Well, I don't think she's on hospice that long, but she Well, they, they actually celebrated her Christmas on Friday. Yeah. Uh, actually yeah. celebrated what? They huh? celebrated Christmas on Friday. Oh. Yeah. That's the house. Okay. Let's, let's, just, let's just say a special prayer for her today, too. Any of these that have up uh, web stars, if you know anything about them, because some have been on here so long, I don't even know who asked for them. Stephen Allen, <coughs> who is he? That might be Glass Blood, neighbor. Blood clots. Is it your neighbor? Allen. It's Allen. Allen. Oh. Does he, he didn't have a blood clots, did he? No. McBride is his last name. Okay. <clears throat> Linda, have you uh, talked with uh, Bob Totters any? Is he doing good? At um, he has, the doctor told him he has some something like gray matter on his brain and he keeps falling. He falls. Oh, poor Bob. But he's still at home by himself. Yeah, he's home. Oh. As, as a landlord, they help each other Do they? back and forth all the time. Oh, I know that's where he wants to be. 
did the Rodney have the surgery? Yeah, that went very well. Anybody who would be available to uh, take him to therapy, uh, Teresa can't drive. Um, Is he going to the Knox Hospital for therapy, or? I think it's in Valpo or Portage or something. That's where he had surgery. Uh huh. So I, I told her I would, I, if I'm available, I would try. Well, he could get community services to Stark County. Huh? Maybe. To, to take him? If, if it, to, you mean to go to Valpo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, I mean, they have to pay, but you know, it's a way. Okay. okay. There's so many people here. On here, they've got to have, you know, recovering, back surgery and everything. They're okay. just a long time getting well. Um, you have got my neighbor, Alan, on here. I do? Yeah, it's, it says Gladys's neighbor, Alan, right here, about halfway down on the right side. On, on the prayer list? Yeah, you could take Alan off if you want. Stephen Alan? Hi. Stephen Alan? It says Gladys's neighbor, Alan. That's Where is it's got oh, my Alan. name first. It says my neighbor Alan. About it's not quite halfway down on the on the right side. Okay. Let's remember our nursing home patients. We got Noki and Betty Bedell. Catherine and Elkhart, Bobby. Bobby's home now though, right? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, he's home. Oh yeah, Bob, I'm sorry. I, I should um, take that off. And Cleta Button and Phyllis Rosan and Suzanne, that's Linda's friend, and Edith uh, Fisher. Oh, the David Budd, that's not the David Budd from the insurance company, is it? Yes. 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 Yeah. That young that David Budd died a couple weeks ago. Yeah. How old is he, Mary? He was six. That was our good church guy. What'd he die from? Heart attack. Uh, we think it was a heart attack, right? How old was he, do you think? He was only 60 years old. Right. Hmm. He came here and preached for the Gideons once. Yeah. Right. He did? Right. He was a Gideon, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's my insurance guy. I didn't know Mine he died. Too. Yeah. Linda's too. Isn't that something? My two, we had the church through, right? I think yeah. it, that was for the church, too. Auto. Somebody so, said that the wife was going to take over. Yeah. Well, between her and uh, Mrs. Fox, the lady that worked there all the time, so I think they'll keep it going. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any others? I know some of these, you know, they just been up on like Linda, they've been here a long time, but there are people that truly need some prayer, too. Yeah. Uh, my uh, great granddaughter had her foot caught in the railing uh, on the stairs, and uh, it swelled up, and they don't know. It looks like it's broke. So we took her to the emergency room, and, and they took x-rays and told us she had a broken toe. Just a toe? a broken toe, your whole ankle and foot don't swell up. Huh. And so they wrapped her toe and sent her home. They <laughs> did. But you could tell it, it's something's broke. Something's broke. What's her name? There, uh, oh, Libby. Libby. Yeah. Libby or Libby? Libby. L I B B Y, we call her. Okay. It's actually Elizabeth, but we call her Libby. Libby. Well, so foot, just, I'll just put foot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Jess is going to take her to a different doctor and have it checked and x rays, the right type of x rays. Probably be a good idea. Because you go in there, they just bring this machine in, take an x ray. It's not like an MRI or stuff like that. Yeah, or scan. Yeah. Well, poor. How old is Libby? Uh, she's 15. She'll be 16 next year. Oh boy. Man, they grow up fast. I know. <laughs> Hard to believe. Well, first, any others? If not, let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Hmm. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this blessed day. Bless each one, Lord, that's made it a point to be in church today. Thank you, Lord. And for praise, we we're so thankful that Faye and and uh, Joe and uh, just a whole crowd got to got to uh, visit with uh, Roger. We're so thankful, Lord. And tomorrow he starts his uh, chemo. Lord, help him help him get through each treatment that he has to take. Thank you, Lord. 
and we pray for Linda's leg brace, Lord, to, to come in sometime this week, Lord, so she can get used to wearing it before she has to go preach next Sunday. We just thank you, Lord, for watching over Linda. Thank you. And Jill Howard, Lord, she's had cancer such a long time. And then, and then that to take a bad fall, Lord. We just put Jill in your hands, Lord, and pray for a quick healing. Thank you, Lord. And we uh, pray for uh, Mary and Soplano, Soplano, cancer, hospice. Oh, Lord, this lady's been through so much for such a long time. We just put her in your hands, Lord, and pray that she could have some better days ahead. Thank you, Lord. And we're so thankful that uh, Bob Totters is at home. Him and his neighbor are helping one another. Lord, thank you for watching over Bob. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for, for Libby, for, for her foot, Lord, whether it's broke or whether it's a toe. We just put her in your hands and pray that the swelling will go away, Lord, and that their, her toe or whatever it is will heal real quickly, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Lord, be with each one traveling today. There's a lot of people on the roads traveling, so watch over them, Lord. Give them wisdom, Lord, to, to just to drive a little slower, be a little more careful. Thank you, Lord. Now we pray for Dan as he comes to bring the message, Lord, that you've laid on his heart. Lord, let us each one listen to it. Help us to understand and to always be willing to talk about you, Lord. In thy precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are we here? Okay. We're here. We're here. All right.
touch our hearts with your Holy Spirit, Father, that as we go into your scripture, that we would be convicted and we would be drawn closer to you. Father, we thank you. That's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Another, another parable. Um, last couple weeks, we were, we looked at the lost sheep, lost coin, the prodigal, um, and we see the father is seeking after the lost lost sinners and forgiving of his sins freely and this week I want to go into Matthew 13 uh, where Jesus is starting to see a, a growing opposition to his ministry um, you see that the religious leaders are being a little bit more scrutinizing and he starts going into parables. In the beginning of chapter 13, he'll go through several parables, just boom, 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 right in, a, right in the way, right next to each other. And he says that this is the one where he starts off where he gets in the boat because the crowds are getting so massive that he can't be around them so that they can hear him. He's out in the boat and he's going to be teaching from there. Now in chapter 12, the Pharisees have already asked. They want they want miracles. They want to see signs. Um, so they're asking for all these things. And this is what sets off these parables where he's going to talk about, about the kingdom, about his ministry, and what is going to be heaven. So going into Matthew 13, jumping up into verse 44. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, and when a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought the field. And this will go along with the next parable of the great, the pearl of great value. 
these will go match together and basically have that same point. And this will tie in later to the lost sheep and lost coin. But the important, the important thing is when we see this is to look at who is the man in this picture? Who is the man? And as I was going through this, I started seeing a couple different different opinions on who the man was, what this hidden treasure was, what the pearl was, and who the merchant is. The traditional teaching that we know from, from Sunday school and from just pretty much any of the main teachings that you see on this, that we would be, our perspective would be that of the man. The hidden treasure being the kingdom of heaven. And finding that kingdom of heaven should be the most important thing in our lives that we should as they do in the parable to sell to get rid of cleaned out everything so we could have that treasure which would be the kingdom of heaven and at the time this was a very common thing for people to have their valuables and just bury them in the ground the banking system isn't quite what it is now actually burying your stuff probably wouldn't be that bad at this point either <laughs> but that was that was a common place that they people would have a parcel of land dig a hole mason jars everywhere just <laughs> full of full of their of all their valuables so when he says that they would give everything away they would sell it get rid of everything just for this one thing and that would be a concept that would be very hard to come, even now, to think of, I want this one thing and I'm gonna sell everything that I have just for this one thing. And this, that would be difficult in pretty much any time frame, any time period, to give it all away. And Jesus will touch on this later as we get into Matthew 19, he'll come up into that again where he says, a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus says, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. And if you want to enter life, obey the commandments. And which ones? So just kind of like trying to narrow it down or trying to find that loophole. Well, if I have to obey the commandments, well, which one do I have to obey? Or which ones do I have to obey? Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and your mother, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, all I, I have kept all of these since I was a young man. What do I still lack looking for another loophole? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell all your possessions. Give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And when he heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to the disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I tell you that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He loved his stuff, his riches, everything that he had. He loved more than the kingdom of heaven. Jesus told him, give it all away, get rid of it, and then come back to me. And the man wasn't thinking of eternity. And I see that so much, I think about that when we see things that are going on in, in the news, things that are going on with society, the way people act, their, the morality of our lifestyles in this country now, but nobody's thinking about eternity anymore. It's what can I get right now? Everything is instant. Everything is microwave. Everything is I have to have it now, instant gratification. Drive up and they bring it out to your car. And you know, COVID brought a lot of this on and now it's just staying. When, I, when my dad was sick, we'd go to Walmart. They wouldn't let you, you had to go in there, boom, hit the button, your trunk pops up. Some guy with a mask that runs out, throws everything in your trunk, and you take off. Didn't even have to stand up. 
but now everybody wants that all the time. It's DoorDash at twice the price, and everything has to be instant. Not thinking about eternity or what's going to be happening or what is going to actually like here. What are you going to do with the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus will continue. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for a fine pearls. And when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Same concept as with the hidden treasure, with the field. He's out seeking for this one thing and he finds it and he's like, I got to have this. This is the best ever. I need this. I'm going to sell everything to get it. Sacrificing everything that he has for this one thing. Seeing the value in the kingdom. Seeing the value of what he has. And Jesus says in Matthew 10 previously, he says, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Giving that sacrifice for the kingdom, that sacrifice for Jesus. Now we have that set up with the merchant and the and the man being us wanting the kingdom of heaven. Now the alternate view, the other side. Who is the man and what is the treasure? What is the pearl? Who is the merchant? Now if you flip it around, let's say Jesus is the man. And the hidden treasure is the lost sinner. Now, in Matthew 13, earlier, in verse 38, just before we came into this, the parable of the sower, and Jesus says, the field is the world. So, if we have the field <coughs> being the world, Jesus is the man, the lost sinner was the treasure. I didn't see too, there was, um, if you're familiar with Warren Wiersbe, um, he's a commentator, a uh, Bible scholar, and has written many commentaries on, on uh, Scripture. <clears throat> this is his main point, saying that the sinner cannot do anything to purchase the salvation. They can't purchase the kingdom of heaven, so that that would put Jesus in the place of who the man is. <clears throat> and that we can't, Jesus is not hidden, is his other point. So Jesus wouldn't be a hidden treasure because he's not hiding. And it said, he goes to Romans 3 where it says, no one seeks God. And Luke 19 says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. And this is actually, this is the first time I'd heard anybody go from this perspective on this it's always been the old you know we're looking for heaven we've always heard the one where it's just we're trying to purchase the kingdom of heaven and the pearl being the unified church and going to Ephesians says there is one body and one spirit just as you were called to one hope one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father over all, who is over all and through all in all. Now the thing with pearls is you don't cut pearls. They're always solid. <coughs> it's not like diamonds or emeralds or any of the other precious stones where you cut those, you can make them and carve them into whatever shapes that you want for your jewelry. The pearl is always solid, unified, and set together. Now going back and forth through these, I've read through both of them, just trying to kind of like, okay, which one do I want to pick? Do I want the traditional one where God, where we find God in the field, or the new one where God is the one that's seeking for us? And I don't know. It kind of depends on what, what you want to think about because both have good valid points 
they both have scripture to back up the, the arguments in both directions. But both can give us encouragement. Both can, we can both learn from both sides of this. Have we sought after the kingdom of heaven? And what are we willing to sacrifice for it? What have I given up for the kingdom of heaven? When we come into the kingdom of heaven, when we accept Jesus as our savior, we have to give up something. There has to be a change. There has to be some situation that's different afterwards. The parable says he sold everything that he had. So reading that, he got rid of everything. Is that convicting? When I look at that and I say, well, what am I holding on to? What am I got a grip on that maybe I said there's something I should let go of? Maybe there's something that I need to get rid of, but I'm holding on to. Is there anything that I'm holding on to instead of sacrificing it for the kingdom? In the book of Haggai, I won't get way back in the Old Testament. Nobody talks about Haggai. It's in there. Yeah, I didn't make it up. <laughs> we'll see if you're actually reading your Bible. You know there's Haggai. <laughs> but their talks, they were um, sowing their seed, but their return wasn't very good. It says that you will drink, but you will not get your fill. And as he goes through, this is the first chapter, they were trying to be prosperous. And the Lord says, that you have worked on your own houses, you have worked on your own homes, while mine is in ruin. You put all of your efforts into yourself, into your own possessions, into what you've got, and you've ignored me. And he says, I've blown all that you have away. So that they weren't prosperous because they weren't giving the Lord the attention. They worked on their own homes while the church was in ruins. The second view gives us a tie into the other parables where we have the Lord seeking for us. And it kind of it kind of goes into those real nice that the Lord is seeking for us. Seeking for the lost sinner to bring us back. And it shows us also how much we mean to him. God so loved the world, the sacrifice he gave for the lost sinner, the hidden treasure, the fine pearl. How much worth that we have to the Father. And I think sometimes when I was going through this, just how much do sometimes we have to be reminded of that? Of that we are loved, that we do have worth. In the midst of all the chaos in our lives, sometimes it feels like just kind of like blown in the wind. But the, with, if you tie the other two parables into these two parables, it shows how much we mean, we mean to him, how much he sacrificed for us, his own son, to bring back that one lost sinner. Just to think we are loved. And doing that was Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world which I had that stuck in my head for a while after it was <laughs> so now you will too Jesus loves the little children alright so you can let me know if it sticks <laughs> but we are loved and the pearl the hidden treasure the lost sheep the lost coin he wants us to be with him Father, we thank you for this picture, this picture that you've given us through these parables that shows us how important you are and how important we are to you. <clears throat> Father, we just ask that, that the, the meaning of these two, of these parables would just penetrate our hearts, and pierce our hearts, and that we would see that, that your love and the sacrifice that you have for us. We thank you for that, Father. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. So the next song, if there's anybody that hasn't come into that. Oh,
dollar Sunday. Oh, opportunity again just to give back to you father you bless us so much you bring us so much joy father we thank you we ask that this would be to your glory it's in jesus name amen, amen. amen. <laughs> yeah I pulled, you pulled a good one on me there <laughs> you got the dollar didn't you <laughs> okay let's stand turn to page 299 299 and um Sing, I must sing all three verses of Almost Persuaded. <clears throat> almost Persuaded now to be. Almost Persuaded as to cease. Sing now.